off the internet. I thought, man, what a great idea. I'm going to go on the ocean. I'm not going to fish. I'm just going to come out there and hang out with a bunch of fishermen and um, just take uh, pictures and videos and look for whales and um, maybe make a video about Jesus calling people to be fishers of men. Now, I had no idea after the first 30 minutes on the boat that my stomach would start rumbling and that everybody started saying, hey, if you need to throw up, just go on over there, lean your head over and throw up. We throw up all the time. Well, I started feeling really sick. They gave me Dramamine and they gave me, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, a granola bar. And here it comes. I had to get a garbage can and I was just throwing up, throwing up, throwing up. And then uh, I thought I was going to die. Several people asked me later, we thought you were going to die. Are you okay? These people are good people. They took care of me, uh, gave me some lime, gave, it a, uh, gave me some waters and everything. So uh, yeah, that was my day on the Pacific Ocean. And I'm kind of glad it happened in a way. Uh, many are the afflictions of the righteous and God delivers us out of them all. Now, I'm the one that chose to come on this boat. I paid for it. It has nothing to do with the Great Commission. I'm not suffering for Jesus. I'm suffering because I bought the ticket and had no clue, okay, that I was going to get sick. So this has nothing to do with suffering for Jesus. Uh, I'm just never going to do this again. But I am going to make a video. Uh, the people on the boat encouraged me to make a video, so we're going to get her done, okay? So Mark, uh, one, I want to start. Here we go. I'm going to start with uh, verse 14 and go down to 18. Now, after John was put in prison, I want to stop right there. John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. And, according to the book of Matthew, John the Baptist was Jesus' favorite preacher. So I'm going to start over because I want you to grasp what it's like following Jesus. It's not always roses and uh, huge mansions and fancy cars, okay? There's a cost to following Jesus. Okay, now after Jesus, uh, after John uh, was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, saying, here's what Jesus said, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Now as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two people. He saw Simon, which later became Peter, Simon Peter, and Andrew, his brother, they were casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Okay, so the first disciples Jesus called to be preachers were fishermen. Why? Because Jesus knows that fishermen are dedicated people. All these people on the boat, they knew they were going to throw up. They knew that they were going to get sick. And many of them threw up. I think I threw up the most, so I get the throw up award, okay? But they knew before they got on this boat that they were going to suffer, they were going to get sick. But I asked the man, I said, well, then why'd you come? And, he, and because he, he wanted the fish. He wanted the good fish. And uh, hanging out on the edge of the water, you're not going to get as many. So there's a, there's a sermon within that. Willing to suffer to get some fish. Okay? Now notice that. All right. Then here's what happened after Jesus called them, he says, Jesus said unto them, the two uh, fishermen, come ye after me, and I will make, that means there's a process, he's going to make, I will make you fishers of men, and straightway they forsook their nets and followed after him. Isn't that powerful? Immediately, the words of Jesus were so powerful that they joined Team Jesus. They forsook their nets. They didn't say, no, I want to keep fishing. This is so... Yeah, they didn't have anything to say. Or else it would be in the Bible that they debated.
debated about it for a couple of days, a couple of hours. No, they followed Jesus. Because he's, hey, you know what? Later on in the book of Acts, when these dudes were getting arrested for preaching this gospel, what did they say? We know that Jesus has the words of life. He's got the words of life. So where can they go? What else is there to do but follow Jesus? And if you're going to follow Jesus, he's going to want you to be a fisher of men. Amen? Praise God. Okay. Uh, let's see. Lost my place. Give me just one second.
basically was running from the president. 22 and 17 order drop. 22 and 17. I'll tell you something. The Bible says uh, you can make your uh, bed in hell, but he's still there. Okay? So no matter where you are, see, Hollywood is making bunkers right now. The porn industry is making bunkers. I saw the other day uh, an actor making a bunker just in case some catastrophic event comes. Hey, you can go make your bunkers to keep your porn industry going. You can make your bunkers to protect your cute little curly hair. But let me tell you something. You can't hide from God. God, God can blow up that bunker with hellfire brimstone if he wants to. Because Sodom and Gomorrah was wicked. And, and the Bible says what uh, happened in Sodom, God will do again. See this book? Sodom did not have this book, and fire and brimstone fell on that wicked city. So, a lot happened with Jonah after he got on that boat. He tried to go to sleep, and uh, the, the boat started rocking and rolling. And, uh, hey, he had to confess to everybody on the boat for their protection. Hey, I'm a preacher, and I'm running from God. If you throw me in there, your boat will quit rocking. That's basically what was said. And uh, they threw him into the ocean, or sea, whatever, and uh, the boat quit rocking. The fear of God came on everybody in the boat. And uh, Jonah went into a well. And then after he was in a, a well, God got his attention. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it takes people going through hard situations to be broken and for God to uh, to use them. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that Jonah ran from God. He ended up thrown in the ocean, living in a whale for three days. God got his attention. He finally said yes. Yes, I will go preach. God did not even tell him, fill your heart with love before you go do it. No, he just said, deliver this message. So God spit him out on dry land. I think it's important to say it was dry land. And then after the dry land, he, it took him three days to walk there to preach his crusade. See, everybody wants a ministry that's going to uh, uh, escort them to the door, a uh, nice parking spot, nice seats. Ah, forget all that. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous that God delivers us out of them all. You know what I was thinking while I was laying down here throwing up, uh, feeling like I was going to die? I was thinking about the persecuted church. I was thinking about the people that are in jail right now. Uh, being tortured, uh, people that are going through things, and you better believe I was praying for them, and I was thinking about them, and I was thinking, you know what, my stomach is going to feel better later, and I'm going to get off this crazy boat, and I'll never get on a boat ever again, but those people that are in other countries, getting their heads chopped off for the gospel, hey, look at the disciples, what happened to them, the people that left their nets, to go follow Jesus. Uh, many of them were martyred. Many of them were martyred and suffered for the gospel. So uh, let me tell you something. The American dream needs to die. It needs to die. And uh, Jonah went to Nineveh and he, he declared the words God told him to. And uh, that whole city repented. The whole city uh, changed their mind. And they fasted all the way down to the dogs and the cats. Everybody fasted, even the king, and uh, turned to God because they believed Jonah's words. Praise God. So what am I trying to say? I want you to see these people on this boat dedicated to fish. They have a hobby and they love it and they have a right to. They pay money to come out here and have a good time. But I'm talking about there's a reason why Jesus chose fishermen to be 
his disciples because he knew they were dedicated. So I ask you, here's my charge. How dedicated are you to the Great Commission? If you're in ministry today, how dedicated are you to deliver it just like the Bible says? Thus saith the Lord. Is ministry a career for you? Is it a passion for you? Or is it just something, something simply to draw a paycheck? Or do you truly want to see Jesus Christ lifted high? My final charge is this. The Muslims are coming to Washington, D.C. September 11th of this year. They're calling for a million Muslims to show up in Washington, D.C. in March. And uh, that ought to make you sick to your stomach if you're a Christian. Or an American, for goodness sakes. So my challenge to you is this. How about let's get two million Christians with uh, Christian flags to show up in Washington, D.C. Uh, on 9-11 of this year and say, over my dead body, this is a Christian nation and it's going to stay one nation under God. It's not going to uh, get all these other crazy stuff going on. But if you don't rise up for God, Islam's going to take over. So, uh, rise up. Psalms 94, 16. Who will rise up for me against the workers of iniquity? That's my challenge.